and changes. What is going on guys, Multiplayer HD here and I am back with another play review and this time we're reviewing Aaron Ramsey's teammate. Of course, if you've seen Aaron Ramsey's review earlier, you will know that Juan Cuadrado was inevitable to come up today or tomorrow and hopefully is out on Monday for you guys. But Juan Cuadrado, I believe he actually has a downgrade of his weak foot to three star. I think he had a four star last year. I could be wrong there though, but I think he was four star. But overall, you look at the base stats of the card, he has 91 pace with 87 dribbling and that definitely catches your eye. With a high medium work rate, 510, this card you kind of look at, there's nothing really wrong with it. It's what you expect, it's a nice card, good, quick, skillful, it's a nice winger. Now we go on into the attribute details and we again start with our pace, 90 acceleration, 92 sprint speed, very good. We go to the shooting, 70 attack position, good, 64 finishing, bad. Now that is a key area for him and you will see why in the clips and you'll also see why at the end of the video when I explain it to you. 84 shot power is good, 80 long shots is good, the volleys and penalties doesn't really matter for a winger, they very rarely take volleys and penalties anyway. For passing wise he has 81 shot passing, 78 crossing, I like that crossing to be a little more. I know we don't really cross in FIFA 20 but it's still been nice here and there to be able to cross the ball in from a capable crosser, not from someone who half hits it every single time. Dribbling wise, 91 agility, that's very good and you do feel that in game. 81 balance, 78 reactions, 85 ball control, and 90 dribbling. Overall, that is a very good for dribbling card. Like 87 dribbling on a card that's 83 rated, you don't really see that often. I know Kevin Campbell's one of them, who's a very low rated card, and he actually has high dribbling as well. So it's very unseen in FIFA, so it's nice to have some low rated cards with good dribbling. And physicality wise, 74 stamina. Personally, I know a lot of people who review cards right now are actually talking about stamina like it's a very important thing. I will mention it if someone's got high stamina, but I feel like right now at the start of the game, I'm not really feeling the effects of stamina, especially with the uh, fitness glitch you're getting right now, where players don't actually require them to be on full fitness. They start the game on full fitness anyway, despite them saying they're on 70 fitness. People think, oh, they, 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 their stamina goes down faster in game. This nonsense. We, we, me and TVM, we've uh, looked at it, played a couple of games, and we noticed that it's exactly the same every single game. We think it's a glitch to do with the new friendly mode where it's not actually registering the use of fitness correctly because I know it doesn't use fitness in that mode. But stamina right now, to me, isn't that useful and I don't really care too much for a winger. I think 74 stamina is good enough for him. Now we look at the team. It's worth mentioning that I actually used him in two teams. This was the second team from a few clips you may see I used him in. I uh, played about two or three games in it, so I'll, just, I'll skip over this team and I'll actually go straight back to the other team which I used him in which I believe was this one. Uh, yeah, it was. So I used him in this team along with uh, Zhao Felix, and I'm not sure if I praised him enough yet, but I can keep praising him every single episode of my reviews. This this guy is just amazing. Like, on the ball, shooting, he's got good stuff, good dribbling. It kind of surprises me when you really look at his in-game stats. He's not really amazing. Normally, he doesn't really stand out anywhere. But yeah, I, I used him with Zhao Felix, Goncalo Guedes and Ramsey of course to supply the full chemistry link to Guadrado, Hector Herrera who's a very good card, Jimenez, Semedo, Goudavani, Dalbert and Adan. Now we're going to the custom tactics and in this formation I particularly played him in the 4-3-3 up alone on the right hand side by myself and with the instructions set to stay forward for a winger, I do that with all my wingers, I find I don't really want them tracking back anyway, I leave that job to the centimeters and defenders. And also I don't come short. With this game I'm noticing quite a lot that you're able to do some quick one twos, get in behind fast. So having them come short to the midfielders, do a one two with them, leg it on in behind, you'll then receive the ball over the top and actually get into a good and competitive position. So I think that may be used quite a lot by a lot of players, especially for the first few weeks of the game. Just keep an eye out for that. It's a very good and useful tactic that I thought was good. Now we go into the chemistry style and this was I could say a tough choice, but it wasn't really too much of a tough choice. I chose from Marksman. That's mainly because I wanted to increase his finishing by plus 10. I want to increase his finishing anyway, by, but also increasing that strength up a little bit because his strength was a little bit low on 58. So with Marksman, it increases his finishing by plus 10. His long shots by plus 10. Volleys by plus 10. A little bit on the dribbling too. 91 agility now goes up to 96. Ball control now goes up to 90 with dribbling going up to 95 as well. And his strength goes up to 63. So it's a few decent boosts here and there, and let's go and see how it performs in game, and I'll be back at the end of the video to give you my verdict.
So one could rather, and let me start with his positives. First up we have of course his pace. That did not go unnoticed by me, he was so quick. Especially after the one two was running behind and uh, chasing off the balls, he was lightning quick. You've seen him with a lot of the clips that had him, he was running in behind, streaking ahead of the left backs or right backs, he had no problem beating people for pace. Next up we have skills. I actually really enjoyed using some of the five star skills with him. He pulled them off very well, along with his dribbling too. He was actually very good at pulling off skills. On the ball he felt very comfortable, very confident. His composure, I don't think it was the highest, but he still managed to feel very comfortable and confident on the ball. He, he did the job which I wanted to do when it comes to pace and skills. But then we move on to his negatives, and this is where the real issues for Quadrado started to show. First up with his end product, you've seen it in two of the clips where there's an easy one-on-one -on -one chance and he should have really put them away, but both times he hit him at the goalkeeper or just put it a little bit wide or hit the post. He was never really there when it came to the full-on end product. And lastly, for his negative, was that he goes missing quite a lot. And by quite a lot, I would say most of the time he was missing. I didn't really see him involved in the game. I changed my tactics around. I changed him to going behind, to come short, to act as a target man, to try and get him more involved. And I even put him striker for the last 20 minutes of a game and he just didn't really seem to show up, he seemed to just wander off and do his own thing and just act like he was playing for a completely different team, maybe the opponent, I don't know. But that was the main key negative for me, that you just didn't really get involved. And maybe that's the reason why we're moving to this price, it's only 8,000 coins, like you expect someone like this, there's players out there who are similar to this right now, who are up in the 30-40k mark, but could drive us only 8,000 coins. So I do believe that this could be a small issue of why he's so cheap and why people don't actually want to use him. But overall, I've given him a rating of 7.5 because he wasn't a bad card. When he got involved and got on the board, he was fun to use. He was good, he was fun, he got past players, he made stuff happen, he created a few chances, scored maybe a goal here and there. But he did stuff. Like he, he was in, he was parallel in the team, if you say, when he was on the board. For foot champs, I wrote yes, but I wrote yes as a sort of counter to where you could actually use him in foot champs. I feel like come off the bench, use him as a last 30 minute um last 30 minute player you could say. Using that pace and that dribbling, he'll be very useful in, the, in foot champs then. But as a starter, maybe as a stretch so I'd say no. There's Lozano, I completely forgot about until tonight. Lozano is from the Serie A who I'd maybe rather go for. I've not used him yet but in past FIFA's Lozano has been a very good right wing compared to Quadrado who's not so much been that good of a right wing. For chem styles, like I mentioned, I used Marksman, and I think Marksman was the best, but you can maybe try other stuff, like uh, maybe a finisher or a sniper, and enjoyment was a 7. He, he went missing too much, I could never really get to use him, but when I did use him, he was a good card. So with that, that comes to the end of my review, and I have to say, if you ask me, should I buy this card, I would personally say no right now, there are many better players. But that is just my opinion, because if you have a different opinion, please leave it down below. I'd love to know what you guys hear. Maybe tell me about using him wrong. Maybe tell me if he plays different in a different formation. I'd love to give him another try. And maybe hopefully he becomes good. But if you've got anyone you want me to review, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be sure to review anyone you guys ask me to, if I have the coins to. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I'll speak to you next time. Peace.